G'day guys and welcome back. Today we're going to talk about one of the most important people in Christian history, if not European history. Let's take a look at Pope Urban II. Urban II is a fascinating person. Um, he, he truly is, because without him, I don't believe we really would have had the First Crusade, certainly not the way that we actually had it. Um, several, quite certainly, Pope Gregory VII had tried to raise a crusade, and a very ambitious crusade. His vision was to lead personally a crusade, an armed pilgrimage to the Holy Land, to retake Christian lands. Um, and consisting around about 50,000 Christian warriors. This was a massive event. This would have been a huge expedition. It's something unheard of at the time in European history. Um, because if you look at, at history, the, the, the biggest army previous to that really was the Norman conquest of England, which probably only consisted of around about eight or 10,000 warriors at most. Um, so the Pope Gregory VII's vision of 50,000 was enormous. This was like you know a raid on this was like d-day in modern history this was like the invasion of france um this was this was huge so pope gregory was unable to do this and i i, I want to ex do some some big research around pope gregory and do a video on him at another time but let's take a bit of a look at pope urban the second he became a bishop in 1080 so really, not that long before the Council of Clermont, um, in, in real terms. He became a central figure in critical church reforms. And you could see how the church was lacking in areas. And I think it's very interesting because Pope Urban II would have been very, very aware of the fractures forming in the Christian church. Now, only 50 years before the, the First Crusade, sorry, 45 years, you had the Great Schism. So the Great Schism was an event that occurred, and we'll talk about this more in another time, but essentially um, there were big concerns and problems between the Eastern Church, Eastern Orthodox Church, and um, the Roman Catholic Church. And eventually you had that split take place um, because they couldn't agree on what today might seem like very trivial issues. But the Pope is very aware of this, and I think the Pope was frightened that Christianity faced further splits and potentially um, bigger problems. And also being part of the senior clergy in Europe, um, I think Pope Urban would have been very aware of the advance of the Muslims. Now, over 450 years, you see the Muslim expansion in the Middle East. Many Christian kingdoms were falling outright to these uh, Muslim armies, and it was terrifying. Um, modern day Egypt, modern day Libya, modern day um, Iran, modern day Iraq, modern day were all falling. This was um, a, a big, big issue for the Christian church. Pope Urban II was elected as Pope in 1088, only really a few years before the very famous Council of Clermont. At no time does Pope Urban II ever really suggest a desire to try and reabsorb the Eastern Orthodox Church back into the Roman Catholic Church. I think he acknowledges that the two churches have split and that um, at the end of the day, Christianity is Christianity. I think he tried to deal with the pragmatic issues that were at hand, being that Europe itself was under a very real threat by Muslim forces and that um, there were bigger issues around the Christian church splitting more. So let's deal with the two branches of Christianity, let's focus on a common purpose, and let's go. Pope Urban II saw the Byzantines as being central 
to the leadership of the Crusades. And in fact, if you look at his speech at the Council of Clermont, then you can see that he, Pope Urban II intends to support the Eastern Orthodox Church and the Byzantines. He doesn't intend to lead them or to dominate them or command them or anything like this. His intention is to support the Eastern Orthodox Church. And critically, Pope Urban II's plan was to reinforce the Byzantine Empire. Pope Urban II had some very clear, precise goals about um, retaking the Byzantine Empire and removing the Muslim forces from that area. He had in intentions about um, retaking the Christian lands in the in the what was the Holy Land, which had been um, overtaken by the Muslims and I think he was very clear and precise in what he wanted how he wanted to do it and what his expectations were I think it was fantastic I think Pope Urban II is a very interesting person um, he was really the first person to be able to unite Christianity in this particular way and to be able to unite Europe in such a way you have to remember that there were so many different cultures within Europe. There were so many different languages. There were so many different sort of ways of doing things. And yet, the Pope came in with this idea, this vision. He didn't force anyone to do anything. He uh, simply said, let's move through, let's do this, because here is a big problem. I think Pope Urban II is a, is a really interesting person. I, I, I very much admire his desires. I think he's a, um, he must have been a very charismatic person and he must have been someone who had um, uh, a, a very interesting way to be able to unite people. It may simply be he was simply the right person at the right time and it may simply be he was very lucky because he had you know, the right people around him or knew the right people to be able to make things happen. Uh, perhaps unlike his predecessor, um, but Pope Urban II was able to get it done. Right, right, guys, that's my look at Pope Urban II. I really hope you've enjoyed today's video. Please like, subscribe and share. I'll catch you in my next video.